<laughs> Welcome back to Matt's Garage. As you can see, I am hands-free. I've got my buddy Mackenzie being our, our camera guru slash editing guy. But today we're returning to the infamous lawn cart. Uh, we recently went to Princess Auto and bought what I'm assuming is enough parts to actually get the drivetrain working. So hopefully by the end of this video, we can have a roller. Um, I say a roller because we'll, we'll be able to start and get going, but there's going to be no brakes for a little bit. It'll be fine. We got this. The biggest part, the most expensive part was the one inch uh, centrifugal clutch for that gigantic engine. And being as the engine is so big, I decided to go with 40 chain. Uh, my other pit bike that I have is also 40 chain, the new one. And the original that my first build uh, is running number 35. And I've rolled and twisted many links. So I figured uh, with this much power, we might as well go with something a little stronger. To pair that with some chain, I actually, uh, when I bought a second bit bike, it came with a bunch of extra parts. And I wasn't sure if a single roller chain was gonna be enough uh, to make it all the way to the back. So we'll be using some master links to attach additional chain. And theoretically, it should make it to the back drive shaft. And speaking of the drive shaft, this big old chungus of solid steel is a keyed shaft. It's a one inch shaft. It's going to have to be cut for sure. So the lawn cart is not three feet wide. So we're definitely gonna be cutting this down to size. And to actually spin the wheels, I decided to go with a 48 tooth uh, size 40 um, sprocket. This is really thick steel. Um, and to get this to pair up to the shaft perfectly, we have a one inch board uh, sprocket hub. So we are going to place these together, do a weld bead around the back, weld bead on the front, grind it nice and smooth. And then lastly, to make sure that the shaft spins and doesn't hit anything to actually mount it to the uh, chassis of the lawn cart, we've got some one inch board uh, pillow block bearings, which are serviceable. So should they start to get a little on the rusty side from the mud or the snow or whatever we're hitting, we can just grease up these nipples uh, and keep the fun rolling. All right, so to get started with building the drivetrain for this lawn cart, we're gonna throw a car jack underneath the original transmission uh, and take out the four bolts required uh, to actually separate it. There might be some linkage for the original shifter knob. I do not know yet. We'll discover that as we go. And then when we get the transmission off, we need to figure out how to detach these wheels. I would like to use the original wheels on the new drivetrain uh, because they're just, they're built for going through the grass. We can probably sling them through the mud. So let's get started. All right, so we've got the bolts out of the back. We got the two bolts. Well, I mean, we didn't take this bolt out because the actual metal bracing is broken. We got the bolts out the front so the, the transmission is fully detached from the chassis. Now we're gonna take off the shift linkage, which appears to be some super rusty cotter pins. Um, this one's folded on itself, so I'm gonna have to grab some pliers real quick. After further assessment, I got the pliers to pull the cotter pin, realized I can hit it out because that is an alignment pin and not one that holds it on. 
Hmm. I should probably change the gear before we did that, but oh well. Now I need a hammer. Any tool is a hammer if you use it right. Cool. Fast Shift right anchorage there. is off. Let's see if we can get it through the top. Boom. Done. Put the chassis on the ground. We can drop the car jack and try to take these wheels off. Recent discovery, took one wheel off and found out this is a, I think, 5 8 maybe half inch shaft. It is keyed, which is great, the wheels are keyed, but we have a one inch shaft. The best I could do is weld this to the end of the one inch shaft, like just cut this off, weld it to the center of that, and key the wheels on. It could work. It could also introduce a lot of wobble. So we'll, we'll give it a shot. Worst case scenario, we will just have to get the parts for a smaller shaft. But uh, let's see if we can get this to work first before we jump to conclusions and spend more money. So I could try to center it up and weld that shaft off of there onto the end of these. Oh. Washers and spacers. I'm hoping this works, but I've got a wooden block here to, it's just sitting here. I'm gonna hold it down with my hand, but it's just so that when I cut these, they get cut to the same size. And I am well aware that this saw is not meant for cutting metal, but if there's a will, there's a way. I don't wanna buy another choppy bit just for metal. Not yet anyways. I think now that I've got them marked, I can just cut them individually. Okay, uh, plan B, gonna have to cut it with the bench vise. Accidentally exploded the cutting disc. And I am well aware that this saw is not meant for cutting metal, but if there's a will, there's a way. Carrying on.
looking pretty flat. Good enough. It's the it's not quite the next day. It's New Year's Day, January first. But uh, yesterday we went to Princess Auto, got all the replacement parts that we needed. We need the hub. We had to do the pillar blocks and the shaft. Uh, the key that we had originally actually fits the shaft perfectly. And I did a quick mock-up yesterday just to make sure that we were on the right order of things and it fits these per perfectly. Like so. Uh, now it's just assembly time and figuring out how to get this on that so we can hook up the chain and uh, possibly go for a rip today. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of like those fucking 70s TV shows. Oh, hey, how are you? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> Damn it. Um... <coughs> We um, are going to be welding the sprocket onto the hub so we can get the chain stuff all situated because as you can imagine, that would be no good. Um, hopefully this doesn't take too long. I know these retain a lot of heat, so definitely need gloves. Uh, and I'm debating, I'm, I'm probably gonna sand the surfaces that I'm gonna be welding just so it has a nice clean weld versus having uh, booger welds everywhere. But once we're done welding this, we can then return to the actual cart and try to figure out how we are going to mount the pillow blocks for the shaft. So let's get started. Come with me. You see that the original mounting blocks on the bottom of this are a little too short. So we rummaged through our scrap piles, found a couple pieces of uh, plate steel. Uh, so the idea is we're going to draw a line around this so I have a perfect size, cut it, weld it to the bottom of the lawn cart, and do that for both sides, and then we should be able to mount the axle.
right quick and then we'll get the drill press out and we'll put in the holes we need for both of these blocks and then we'll weld these to the cart. <laughs> this right here, this is the fucking reason I bought this thing. It's drilling straight holes in my pockets. Probably fucking build more work bench in here. I recently bought a new tool, a center punch. Being as they're pillow blocks, they don't have to be perfectly aligned because they do have some pivots. Well, I'm not super cautious about precision. to make sure is that the hole on both sides is the exact same depth from the back so that way it doesn't twist the drive axle because then you'll be driving sideways and nobody wants that so i think what i'll do for alignment is just put the hole right on the edge of the flat part because then it'll be perfectly even so, we need to bring the welder over here. Oh, gimbal died. Not a very long battery. That's going to be a really fun shot right there when that happens. I'm not going to lie. Just, uh, we just did a, a Home Depot run to get some, uh, some nuts, bolts, and washers so we can mount the pillow blocks properly to these new pads. Uh, I've prepped the pads and grinded down the sides that are going to be welded to the uh, the frame of the cart and the cart has been sanded and ready to go so now it's time to weld on our mounting plates and then get our drive shaft going <laughs> These are still a little hot. Um, we poured some water on them. Just kind of cool them down. The next is mounting the pillow blocks that holds the drive axle. Okay, we've got our, our Home Depot special nuts and bolts. We've got two pillow blocks. That side's freshly welded, so it's the highest. So for now, I'll melt this. Uh, He's down. So maybe we should get the bar in first and then adjust it. Yeah, get it straight. So 
this is the original um, hub that the wheels from the old transmission had. So I'm gonna try to get this side to stick out just as much as this did, because we have the original spacers to reuse so that the wheels are mounted on flush. A few more wax with a hammer, and then we'll center this up to the chain in the front. Get the uh, keyway slotted in and tightened down. And then once we hit this side, we'll do the same thing. We'll measure roughly how wide this is, and then we'll cut off the excess. This didn't work on the last one. We uh, blew up the disc. This is an actual steel disc, so this time it should be fine. Be ready. Plus, it's not solid steel this time, it's a tube. tested the wheel we've got the new spacers put in we have the lock washer and uh, sorry the washer and the locker and locking cotter pin i think c-clip i don't know what they're called whatever it's the thing that holds the wheel on um we've got the wheel on we've got the spacer in so it keeps it away from the frame so it doesn't hit any nuts and bolts uh, we still need to install the keyways to everything but i figure what i would do next is cut off the tiny bit at the end here because from hitting with a hammer to get it in. We kind of mushroom top the top here. So cut off a tiny bit. We'll put the other spacer in. We'll put the wheel on, mark the groove that we need to cut for the um, locking washers on this side. And then we'll keyway everything, run the chain and hopefully go for a rip. Stop moving, guy. There's yeah. so much fucking just weight to it. It just rolls. High quality production. I got a lighting guy and a camera guy. <sighs> For the low, low price that we want to play with this. We out here. We looking at wheels and shit. They spinning together. Beam. Um, we cut a small keyway piece for the clutch. I've already tightened down the Allen bolts here for this to be one with the engine. Now, unfortunately, when we went and got all the parts, they didn't have any quarter inch keyway. So I'm just going to slide this in here and I'm going to weld it in place because this is not coming off for a very long time. And if I do need it to come off, I can just grind the weld out. That'll do. Okay, so we put on the chain, we, we test the engine, the clutch is working perfectly. Um, we grabbed some spare bed tube frame, I don't, whatever, it's, it's box, box tube. 
because we noticed that when we run the chain to here to the back, it's hitting on the entire chassis here. So using this box frame, I'm gonna weld in here and then another one above it. And these will act as chain guides so it doesn't just kind of eat away at the edge of the frame. get the underside when we lift it back up. So after a lot of greasy chain work, we finally got the chain on. We've got the two tubes to guide the chain to the uh, clutch just to keep them from hitting each other and hitting the frame of the cart. It is fully spinning, nice cruise, nice and smooth, everything's in line. And we're gonna fire up the engine while it's still hanging from the roof uh, and just see what the wheels do. Excitement, the cuts, the amount of cuts. Fuck, guy, it's right there. loud <laughs> you hear him he's, Holy he's fucking fuck. scared <laughs> this is he's on the other side of this fucking block right now <laughs> this is so loud <laughs> I'm so stoked <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Look at it go, too. Look at it just cruising along. <laughs> that just... <laughs> the fucking god damn it! He's got his foot on the ground to stop. Alright guys, it's been a while since I've shot much of anything in the garage, but there's a lot happening in here uh, and I've been really busy with work so I haven't really been able to edit and post anything. Um, got parts coming on the way in the mail for the three-wheeler. Uh, the mini bike, we, the, the small mini bike, we actually broke uh, riding it too hard in a field. The a snap ring that holds the clutch, the centrifugal clutch together uh, broke. So I got a bunch of snap rings on the back bench there. So hopefully that can uh, 
get resolved relatively quick. But there's um, there's one big thing that I need to address. Uh, we, as you previously saw, uh, I've got some test footage of ye old lawn cart. Um, and we have a bunch of ideas for it, but as it is right now, it is not considered to be safe. Uh, and what we're planning on doing, or at least what I'm planning on doing, uh, we have this big quad that I've determined is going to cost way too much money to fix. But it's got a nice rack and pinion system, nice front suspension, nice rear suspension, uh, some beefy tires, even a brake system that functions. So the plan now is to take this lawn cart, pretty well gut it down to the frame, and install the uh, front end and back end of that quad onto this frame. So we have the riding lawnmower, but you know it won't be as squirrely as it was on our first test drive because just steering it a little bit it's very top heavy so it felt like it was going to throw you over so if we rebuild the front and uh, rear end of that um that that lawn cart then it will increase stability and i'll be able to push content forward because as it sits i was waiting on parts and then i was debating on how i wanted to, to get it working and I finally, I've drawn the conclusion that I need to drastically overhaul the frame because it is way too top heavy. Like it's a fast engine. I, I took it around my circle one time and it was, it was sketchy. Okay. I didn't have brakes on it. So that made it a little more sketchy, but like it was just to a point where any slight movement of the steering wheel would throw your entire body side to side and it was slight it felt like it was delayed like i would turn left and then a couple of seconds later it would start going left and it, it it didn't make sense to me so wrapping up this episode um we got it running it works the the concept is there but for safety reasons we're going to basically be gutting it and changing the whole steering system and adding suspension because with no suspension on it right now, any form of bump would twist the existing frame, throwing the chain off the engine. So it was like, okay, yeah, I could reinforce the frame, but then it's gonna be like, you're gonna be bouncing around like crazy as soon as you go to ride this thing in a field, which is what its intended purpose is, is to go faster a field. So yeah, um, big things coming this way. Uh, happy to be finally putting out another video. It, it's been a while. Uh, you can hear the birds chirping, the weather's starting to get warm, so it's a little more comfortable being out in the garage. Uh, that all being said, thank you once again for tuning into Matt's Garage. Uh, I am trying to move this forward and I would love suggestions for future ideas. Uh, it, the slogan of my channel is just a dude in his garage building stuff. Um, I've expanded my workbench in the back here. It is nowhere near level. That's why I bought a level today, so I can actually level it out. Um, now I've got room for everything. The drill press is no longer sitting on a bar stool. I've got the bench grinder in. I've got my chop saw back in. I've got all this extra clean area. My bench vise is installed. So I am progressing, and I want to make this channel worthy of, uh, you know, let's, let's hit my first thousand subs this year. It is early 2023. Maybe we can make it happen. Maybe we can. Who cares? It could be a pipe dream. But I'm doing this because I enjoy it. And I just want to share the experience with you guys. Uh, again, thanks once once again for watching my videos. Thanks for checking out the channel. Uh, if you have friends or family that might find this content interesting, feel free to share it with them. Uh, and if uh, uh, we'll take something from Linus Tech Tips real quick. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you didn't because it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm out here because I enjoy this. Uh, but yeah, you guys have a good one.